Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. Without any further introduction or delay, let's go to Abe Manley, a member of the Shakespeare Club here in the Des Moines metro area. Uh, but you don't uh, do, do you, where you live is it considered you're not Des Moines Metro because you're kind of out in the sticks a little bit. No, yeah, I'm in Colfax, which is like 30 minutes east of Des Moines, and that's uh, so so Central Iowa. It's called a Central Iowa Shakespearean Club. Yeah. Are you the furthest? Uh, do you live the furthest away? I do, yeah. yeah. And where does where does the Shakespeare Club meet? We uh, meet to practice at the houses of uh, some of our members. So it just rotates around, and, yeah. and whoever whoever has the uh, is is it a volunteer basis, or are people told like you're hosting next it's, month? It's a little of both. Yeah, yeah. So let's get started. Let's start with like who are you, and and why 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 do we want to have you on here today? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, my uh, my name is Abe Manley. I'm a 16 year old uh, homeschool high school student. I'm going into my junior year. And I am also the leading member of the Shakespeare Club, as well as this year the uh, director for our production of Julius Caesar. And I also play the titular character. The what character? Uh, the titular character. I played Julius Caesar. I, I should have had you read the news because I, <laughs> I, I butchered like three of those really big words. And I don't think I could even repeat the word you just said there, nor do I even know what it means. So uh, how long has the Shakespeare Club been around? Yeah, so um, we've been kind of active since uh, winter of 2023. Um, we had our first performance last summer, and this is our second time, uh, second time performing. Excellent. And what was the what was the motivation behind s- starting it? And, and you said you were the leader. So was it was this your idea? Or was, was it somebody else's idea? Yeah. So at the time um, in winter of 2023, I was kind of I was looking for like uh, I was looking for a project to really sink my teeth into. Um, and I had read up to this point exactly one Shakespeare play, The Merchant of Venice. Um, little did I know that less than a year later I'd be directing a production of that play. But um, I enjoyed it, and I wanted to get into like reading literature with my friends. So I, um, we got together, and we thought, why not read some Shakespeare and see what we can do, see what happens. Um, as I learned, you should never ask yourself uh, that question unless you're prepared for what may come about. That's, that's exactly right. Or pray for those things because uh, uh, God will give you plenty of opportunities to, uh, to, to, to reveal his plan in, in, in relation to that. So the, the Shakespeare Club has been around for a, a year and a half or, or so. And wh- how many people did it attract right, right out of the gate? Did you find a lot of people eager to do this or did you have to do some heavy recruitment? Uh, I, yeah, the latter. I, uh, some of my close friends were uh, – on board right away. It took some of the other people who uh, were involved and are still involved. It took a little bit of convincing. Uh, this year, our group for Julius Caesar, we have 17 people uh, working on it. Um, but I love having this. It's it's not too big of a group, um, so I don't have to I don't have to worry about like all these different cast members. But um, yeah, we Julius Caesar as written, has like a whole bunch of one-off roles that only are in for one scene. So I had to adapt that a little bit. Do, you, do, do uh, certain individuals have more than one role then? If, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, uh, I think there are only four parts in the play that only, uh, the actor only plays one role. Excellent. And then, so uh, I want to go back just a little bit. So you, you had a performance last year. Yeah. And uh, what uh, what was that performance and what did you learn from, from that first experience? Yeah. So that um, performance, as I said, that was the uh, Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice. Um, that uh, was my first kind of foray into um, performing Shakespeare. I'd always thought that would be a cool thing to do. Uh, but I knew next to nothing about um uh, drama or performing, but um, I guess it it had never like I never really thought about how I would. Yeah, I'm going to interrupt you there. Okay. I know you know a lot about drama. <laughs> you you are one of how many children? I I'm the oldest of eleven children. Oldest, so you're a household of eleven children. So you are not uh, you are not absent of of, of drama. But uh, this is this is more like a you know prescribed or formal drama. Yeah, right? that's, acting drama. Ah, uh, that's true. <laughs> um, I I guess I had never thought about how I would have to direct, but seeing as uh, no one else um, kind You're of the had the of 11 conviction. kids. You've got to do a lot of directing uh, yeah. with your younger siblings, um, right? So see how the Lord has been preparing you this for you, this for you the, the whole time. Yeah, right? I, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, uh, we all, it was a learning process for all of us. The, our first production, and um, but it was ultimately so fun to be able to um, 
kind of get into Shakespeare and performing it without any sort of outside opinion, without, you know, academics telling us what to think about it, without... Um, it's probably a good thing we didn't have any sort of people who were had experience with play productions uh, or drama before because we were probably not doing things uh, how you're quote-unquote supposed to do them. But um, we had, yeah, we had our little production in a park in Altoona, and um, it was wonderful. We uh, Everything kind of came together at the last minute, but I'm so grateful to have done that. Yeah, my experience with performing, and talk to, tell me if the, you sort of experience the same, but uh, there, there's that once the performance is done, there's that sort of like bittersweet feeling like, yes, it's done, but I can't wait to get started and do it again. Yes, and that's exactly what we felt. Um, we as I, Once we finished performing Merchant of Venice, I was kind of, I was kind of like, do you guys want to do this again? Um, and everyone was like, yes, we, yeah. So we knew we wanted to perform a tragedy this time. Uh, Merchant of Venice is a comedy. And so we read almost all of Shakespeare's tragedies together, trying to find one. Um, and after kind of lining them all up, Julius Caesar just kind of made sense. Um, it was one of the shorter ones. It um, was it could be less complex in term of terms of like set and production. Um, but after we really got into it, I'm really glad that that's the one we picked because it's this it's this really interesting um, story. Well, it's it's one of I think. Depending on how you look at it, it's the only Shakespearean tragedy based on actual events. Um, but it, it's kind. It's this really interesting, like moral puzzle almost, because we have all these questions, like who's the who's the real hero? Did Caesar deserve to die? Were any of the characters justified in the actions? I know that some directors, when um, doing productions of Julius Caesar, like to answer these questions or make a statement, but. Um, I like to kind of leave it up to the audience or somebody who's watching. Kind of decide for yourself who was in the right and or was anyone in the right. I think that's uh, it, it, so. Uh, that leads me to my next question, which was going to be uh, why Shakespeare. But I, I think I know the why. How, how does Shakespeare tie into our Catholic faith? Yeah. So um, as Catholics, we are called to love the true, the good, and the beautiful. And I don't think anyone would disagree that there is abundant beauty in Shakespeare's work. Um, we, uh, it, and also, as I was just saying, it has these, these deep moral questions. Um, I, one time, um, I had an experience, I was reading, it was, uh, Shakespeare's Macbeth and I was just, I was, uh, reading it and I was contemplating, like, obviously I don't think I, I would be able to actually murder someone, <laughs> but, um, if given, um, the opportunity for power, for, worldly goods with um gained by evil means would i have the strength to resist that and so that those kind of things are um i think can be really powerful to take to prayer and um shakespeare uh it's actually there's good evidence to believe shakespeare himself was a catholic a secret catholic in elizabethan england when that was uh being persecuted uh he there's several references to the sacraments in Shakespeare's body of work, including in Julius Caesar, a beautiful line about um, the role of spouses in marriage from uh, Brutus's wife, Portia. And it's uh, Shakespeare owned a property that um, was uh, revealed to, uh, they were hiding secret Catholics, like um, sort of Edmund Campion style. So I think that'd be really cool if Shakespeare was actually Catholic. Yeah. So you have uh, the, you know, it's maybe, maybe it'll be revealed. He was more Catholic than we thought. Yeah. Right? That would, see I'd love to see that. <laughs> what, uh, you want to give us a, a line or, or, or a portion from the, uh, fr- from the play? What, what, if somebody wants to attend, give them a, give, give them a teaser of what, what, yeah. what they might hear. Yeah, sure. So as I said, I play Julius Caesar. Um, so this uh, this monologue comes right before his assassination, and the conspirators are kind of distracting him with this plea. One of them, his uh, brother, was banished, uh, and so this is kind of his response. I could be well moved if I were as you. If I could pray to move, prayers would move me, but I am constant as the northern star of whose true fixed and resting quality there is no fellow in this firmament. The skies are painted with unnumbered sparks. They are all fire, and every one doth shine. Yet, in the number, there is but one that holds his place. So, in the world, it is well furnished with men, and men are flesh and blood, and apprehensive. Yet, in the number, I do know but one that unassailable holds his rank, unshaked of motion, and that I am he. Let me a little show it, even in this, 
that I was constant, Simber should be banished, and constant do remain to keep him so. There you go. <laughs> Outstanding. Tell, Thank tell you. our tell our listeners what is the uh, what what is the play again? Where can they uh, where can they see it? When can they see it? Give us all the details. Yeah. So uh, this one night only uh, outdoor performance is at uh, Wagner Park in Ankeny. It's at the Wagner Park Bandshell on Friday, August 9th at five o'clock p.m. Um, it's non ticketed event. We'll accept free will donations, but anyone's free to show up. Uh, we'll have. Uh, lawn chairs and space for people to set up um, uh, their own blankets. Uh, Julius Caesar is presented by Joe and Laurie Dunham and sponsored by Big Red Q Quick Print, Gregory Waddle with the Knights of Columbus, Justin Doyle and Doug and Jean Brangan, and uh, Crazy Karaoke, that's crazy with a K, is providing us with audio equipment to use. Um, we're going to have a limited amount of merchandise to sell. Uh, it's going to be really fun. We've been working really hard on this. And Folks, that, yeah, I, I, get out and see this. Uh, support it. Give them the date again in time. Yeah, that is uh, the Wagner Park Band Show in Ankeny on Friday, August 9th at 5 o'clock p.m. Excellent. And if people want to learn more, maybe they, they want to get involved with the Shakespeare Club. Uh, how, what's the best way to, uh, to find, out, uh, find more information? If you want more information, we're, we're working on – we have a website. It's, we're working on a better one. But um, the best way you can um, – if you want to find more, you can email me at uh, abraham.manley at gmail.com. That's uh, a- M-A-N-E – Ugh, Abraham.manly, manly spelled M A N L E Y. Perfect. And uh, see, that wasn't so bad. He, he said yeah. he was a little nervous coming into uh, to the, the studio. I said, if you can, if you can memorize uh, hundreds of lines, uh, then, then you can come talk on the radio. You did a great job, Abraham. And thanks for uh, clarifying. I mean, you solidified the myth. Homeschoolers are weird. I don't yeah. know many 16 year olds that are that articulate, love Shakespeare, and, and could do what you just did. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, that, that, that coming in and, and telling us about this event. Folks, we hope you'll get out and support uh, the Shakespeare Club in their performance in Ankeny on uh, August 5th? August 9th. August 9th, thank you. 5 p.m., that's the, the number five ahead of my brain. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.